Hey, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you three practical ways to use Generate Blocks Global Styles in the latest version 1.7 Pro update. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how to create a CSS grid. We're gonna create a couple of utility classes or utility global styles. And then we're gonna create a couple of looks like headlines. So stick around to find out how to do that. So I'm here in the WordPress block editor. And the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and expand my document overview here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I also want to go ahead and either click this button or you can type slash container because what we wanna do is add a generate blocks container to our page. Now let's suppose I want to create a layout here that has a column on the left-hand side that takes up about one third of our page. And then I want a column on the right-hand side that takes up about two thirds. We can do that with generate blocks built in flex controls, but now with global styles, we can actually create a CSS grid, which makes it a lot easier and more flexible. CSS grid has a lot of other cool controls we can cover in the future, but we're gonna keep it relatively basic today. So on this container, what I wanna do is go over here to the add or create style section, and I'm going to type in grid hyphen one hyphen two. Now you can name this class whatever you want, but in my case, I wanna be able to look at this global style and understand that this is a grid and there's a column that's one unit on the left and then a column that's two units on the right. And I'll show you that in just a second. And this is basically taking up all the available space. So you kind of can look at these class names and just know what the layout is gonna be like before you even add it to your page. So we'll click on create, then we'll go to blank style. Then let's expand the layout tab here and we're gonna to go to display of grid. And you can see this grid template columns. Now in generate blocks, we have a number of great presets for you available that you can pick from. And if you click one, you can kind of see the way that this is going to work. Some of these can be a little bit complicated in terms of the formatting, but there are great tools out there that can generate these grid template columns for you. To keep it really simple, what we're gonna do in this case is type in one FR space two FR. And what this is, is a fractal unit. So that's going to basically divide up all the available space into one unit on the left and two units on the right. It'll make more sense when we actually have something on the page here. So what I can do now is inside of my container, I can add in another container and you can see automatically without me doing anything, it already created a container that is roughly the available space that I was looking for. I'm gonna go back to the parent container and I'm going to add in another one. And you can see that we've now achieved exactly what I was after where I have a column on the left that takes up about a third of the page and a column on the right that takes up about two thirds of the page. And that's handled automatically for me using that CSS grid. What's really cool about this is let's say I started adding some content. I stick in a generate blocks headline. I say, hello world. I add in some text copy here. Then maybe for instance, I you know add in an image element. And then I decide, you know what? I actually want my image on the right and my text copy to be in the tiny little area. I can just reorganize these and CSS grid refactors the size of those containers automatically for me. This would be a fair bit more difficult in flex. You'd have to reorganize or potentially do some trickery to make this work automatically for you, but you can see CSS grid is incredibly easy to use. Now, what I do in my own sites when I'm working in Generate Blocks is I create a couple of these grid utility classes. Sometimes I only need two or three on a site, but you can make as many as you want. Now we're gonna move into the next section here, which is the utility classes. So of course, we probably don't want these containers to actually be touching one another, but there's also probably cases where you want the spacing to vary between these columns. And we can do that with another global style. So again, selecting my parent container here, I'm gonna go back to this plus button to add a new style. And in this case, I'm just gonna type in a gap hyphen two. Let's click on create. We're gonna to go to blank style. Again, we're gonna to go to layout and display of grid, except this time we're gonna leave the grid template columns alone. I'm gonna scroll down here to the row gap and the column gap, and in both cases, I'm gonna type in two rem and two rem. That changes our unit here to relative units instead of using pixels. And we can see now that our column gaps are spaced apart automatically for us, which is awesome. So I'm doing this in a utility class because if I decided that I wanted to come back later and maybe reduce that gap just a little bit, I could simply just remove this and replace it with a gap hyphen one class. Now one rem is equal to 16 pixels. So a gap of two gives me 32 pixels of gap between the columns and the rows. But of course you can use whatever naming convention and whatever spacing convention you wanna follow. I typically utilize one rem myself. Perfect, so we have our first utility class. Let's create another one that I would use in real websites as well. So what I'm going to do is click on my container here. I'm going to add another style and this one I'm just going to call shadow. We can click on create, blank style. 
We're going to go down to effects and then box shadow and click on plus. And you can see it inputs a box shadow for us automatically just so you can see something, but that doesn't look the best. So we're going to go zero, four, 10 blur, and then a spread of zero it makes it a little bit softer like that. Just a nice little box shadow to lift that card off the page. And then what I can do here is go to my other container. And again, we're going to add the shadow class. I can either type in the word shadow or click on it. And you can see that that's going to add that for us perfectly. Now, of course, our text is touching the edge of that card. So it, with the box shadow, that doesn't quite look the best. So there's a number of different ways that we can achieve padding on those, but I would do it with a global style personally, rather than applying it directly to this container. So let me show you the difference here. If I were to go right here on this container, I'm not actively editing a class. So if I went to the spacing section and I joined all these together to say one rim of spacing, that works. But now this is attached directly to the local styles of this container and not the global styles. So then I kind of have an independent mix of local styles versus global, which is not the best for keeping things consistent across your website. Luckily, what we can do is go ahead and clear out our local styles just by using this clear local styles button. And then exactly as we've done with our shadow class, you could create utility classes for things like padding and margin as well. And now I wanna show you one other example. So I'm going to go ahead and just insert something after here. I'm gonna pop in a generate blocks headline. The final thing I wanna show you is how to create headlines that look like something that maybe semantically are a different heading level. So it will happen fairly often in designs, especially in hero sections, where you actually want the element to be an H1, but for whatever reason, it being the size and styling of an H1 doesn't quite make sense. Now, in my case, I'm using Generate Press as my theme. So the H1 styles are being picked up and inherited automatically from the theme. So I don't need to worry about that, but what I would wanna do here is create a alternate style so I could type in something like H1 hyphen alt. I'm gonna do blank style again. And then let's say for this particular case, we want the text color to be blue. Maybe we want the uh, text transform to be uppercase. Maybe we want a bolder font weight. Maybe we want some letter spacing of like 0, 1.25 rem. And then maybe we want our font size to be a bit smaller than the standard one. So maybe like two rem or something like that. Now we can just put in whatever we want here. So, you know, welcome or whatever the H1 needs to be. And then of course I can reuse this however I want to across my entire site because of the fact that we set this up using a global style. Then if I have multiple elements, let's say across two or three different pages, I have this headline that exists and the client asks, maybe we need to change the, the color to blue or the font weight or something like that. We can simply go edit this one global style Let's say they want the font size to be a little bit bigger, 2.5 rem this time instead of two. And maybe they're like, ah, oh, it's too bold. We want it to drop back down to 500. We apply that to our global style and it applies everywhere across our site, even if these elements aren't currently on the same exact page. So some really cool use cases here for global styles in Generate Blocks. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll be sure to address those in a future video. Again, my name is Jonathan and thank you so much for watching.